Hey guys, Theo here, and welcome to the Caffeine Zone, where we discuss everything coffee. Now, on this video, we are going to discuss this coffee, Rick Coffee. Why would I want to discuss Rick Coffee? Theo, that's plastic coffee. Theo, that's coffee made in a laboratory. <laughs> no, this is not a scientific thing. This is coffee and root. Yes, you heard me right. Chicory, it is a root. So chicory is basically a plant that grows to up about one meter. It's got big purple flowers. We pluck it out of the ground, cut off the roots, wash the roots, bake the roots, grind the roots into a very fine powder, and then blend it with coffee. So coffee is cheaper, number one, and number two, last slightly longer. But it only lasts longer if you use the right recipe. Now you guys have heard me speak on recipes so many different times. So today I want to specifically discuss Rick Coffee's recipe. Now, when you purchase this big baby, you will notice that it says 1.5 grams of coffee, or in this case, chicory blended with coffee. Now it says that it is chicory 6.5 parts, coffee 5 parts. On this side, it says it creates. So this 1.5 kilograms of coffee and chicory blended makes 550 cups. So if you take 1.5 and you divide it by 555, you should get around about 2.7 grams of coffee per cup. Now again, guys. A cup is not a mug. I know in South Africa we drink mugs. This is a cup. It's a 100 milliliters cup. So you use 2.7 grams per cup. So if you've got a huge mug and it's 350 mils, just do the math. You'll know how much coffee you need to use. Now, if I go back to the tin, you guys will see that there's this little beautiful picture that shows exactly what is contained in every single serving. And I'm sure most of you have looked at this, but there's this very, very fine print. If you can see that, it says 2.7 grams per serving. Yes, you heard it right. It's actually written on the tin. <laughs> so that means all we need to do is try and figure out what that flavor of that recipe would then be. So let's do this. Got my scale. Now if you're a coffee snob, you need a scale. So I basically tear, so I zero my scale. I get my spoon. Now, in your house you might have this size or this size. You still need to weigh it out. So if you don't have one, if you fill up this spoon, now this is the teaspoon size to about that. That comes out to, you guys can see, it's not the big spoon, it's the small spoon. 2.2 grams of coffee. So I can go even, you know, you can kind of fill this one up. I'm not gonna go with that spoon now because it's just too hard to find the measurement. Make sure I'm on a zero. Take this one. I'm gonna pour all the way up to 2.8 grams. So there's some coffee left there. I'm gonna steal some back. So I still took all of that out. 2.7 grams of coffee. Now, of course, the water. Never, ever, 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 ever use boiling water. Boiling water burns your coffee. It makes your coffee bitter. That means you need to add sugar because it's disgusting and nobody likes any better things. Okay, so this water is 85 degrees Celsius, which means it's hot enough. Water, in most places, starts boiling between 89 and 92 degrees Celsius. Unless you live by the coast, close to the ocean, then it's at 100 because of air pressure. I'm using 85 degrees Celsius water. We're gonna zero the scale and we're gonna go to exactly 100 milliliters of water. Give it a nice swirly 
pour because you want to make sure that you wet all of the coffee so you don't have some coffee grinds or coffee flakes still laying inside there. I'm going to go all the way up to 100 mils of water. There we go, 100.3. Good old spoon, give it a nice stir. What a cute stir. Tick, 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 tick. Which now means we have 100 mils of water. Now you will notice that this cup is not full to the brim. It's not going to overflow. There's still way more than enough space for milk in there. That is a good portion of coffee. So if you're using a jug or a mug, just work it out. 2.7 grams per 100 mils of water. So you've got 300 mils. Let's go with 2, 4, 6, about 6.8, 6.9 grams of coffee per 300 mils of water. That's your ratio. Don't use boiling water because you don't want to burn your coffee. And then, of course, we can give this a sippity sip. Now, I would not suggest drinking this too quickly because it's still fairly hot. So I'm going to use a spoon so I can cool it down a lot faster. If you're going to add milk, obviously the milk will balance the, the flavors and, of course, also cool it down. I'm going to take some of that. Now, how do we taste coffee? By using oxygen. Now, if I used a recipe of three spoons of coffee with 100 mils of water, I'm going to have an under-extracted, extremely sour coffee, and I won't be able to enjoy that. If I used one spoon of coffee, small spoon, and a 300 milliliters mug, then I'm going to have an over-extracted coffee. With other words, it's too much water, too little coffee, which gives you this blunt, not strong enough, is the words we use, cup of coffee. And of course, we don't want that. So, yes. <sniffs> of course, it's chicory, 6.5 parts, which means it's got a fairly bitterish flavor. Very chocolatey, like a dark chocolate. But there's actually a soft sweetness following at the tip of my tongue. <sniffs> which means I don't really need sugar. So there you guys have it. That is how you make a good instant coffee at home, by using a proper recipe. So, thank you guys for watching. Give us a thumbs up. If you haven't, please subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video. May you find your happy place in every single cup.